PSD with you. Tutorial on gaming. Before we start, if this is your first time to the channel and you would like to learn more about FreeBSD and the journey to a better desktop and server, then please hit subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out. As you may know, Linux has been having a problem with wasps recently, but on FreeBSD, we don't have any wasp problems. But it doesn't mean that we don't take our security seriously. Installation of Rootkit Hunter is really easy on FreeBSD. You PKG install RK Hunter. And you get some dependencies that it has to install them. It's not a problem. You can, of course, install via ports if you wish. Uh, but for this purpose, this particular instance, we're going to use the uh, pre built packages. Purely for speed. Right. And now, I'm going to show you how you can configure it. And I'll switch to my main machine. And there's a bit of switching going on between the virtual uh, machine and the real machine. Now we're on the real machine. And what I'm going to do is that I'm um, going to just configure Rootkit Hunter to start up, update, and then check on a daily basis. I'm just showing you some of the uh, configuration options available. If you want to see more of them, there's, I'll uh, leave a link down below to the Rootkit Hunter website. Right, okay, let's have a look. So if I do update, just to make sure that we get the latest ones. Yeah, there's no updates available. Now if you add an entry into periodic.conf, and then you add daily underscore RK Hunter underscore again update so that's going to uh, tell it to update on a daily basis to make sure that you don't miss out on any new definitions or uh, entries and the next one RK Hunter Yes, I have noticed the uh, the stray bracket. I'll fix it in a minute. Update flags. And what we're going to do is tell it to uh, just update. That's it, really. No, I'm not going to add uh, no color as well. Don't worry, I'm going to fix that bracket in a minute. I just need to concentrate on what I'm doing. Daily, uh, we're going to have RK Hunter. No, I can't stand it. I'm going to have to fix it now. Right. And then underscore. I'm talking about check. Enable. So that's um, just to let it know that we want to check on a daily basis. Do you know, I could have copied and pasted each one of these up to that uh, second underscore, but never mind. And then we're going to set some flags for the check. One of them is to check everything, check all. And the second is no colors. So if you just want a, um, a monochrome display, I mean, it doesn't matter. And skip, this is an important one, skip key press. And you'll see why in a bit. Scanning a clean, new FreeBSD install. Right, we're going to go back to the virtual machine, and I'm going to do a scan of everything. Uh, there shouldn't be any, there's a warning, but that you can ignore that one. There, will, there shouldn't be anything available uh, out of the ordinary because it's a brand new install. That skip key press that I put onto the, what you automatically want every time uh, you, know, you, you boot into the machine on a daily basis, is to prevent, as you can see, it says press enter to continue. That skip key press would actually just one continuous scan. You wouldn't get it interrupted. So make sure you put that in.
on on that they didn't pick anything up as i knew it wouldn't but now we're going to go back to uh, the main machine i'm going to do another scan a little bit nervous doing this because um the last thing you want to do is discover you've got something Although I have a feeling I know what's going to pop up. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. That user local bin get. Um, I've actually read up on that, and it's nothing to worry about. It did shock me when I first saw it, but it's um, it, it's been put there by uh, a little bit of Perl, and I'll show you that later. So if you do this on a FreeBSD system and you get the same warning, it's um, yeah, it's nothing to worry about. So this one does take a while. Uh, I've got quite a few things on this particular system. I'll speed it up a bit anyway. Right to the end. Yeah, it says suspect files one. And that's the user local bin get. So it's checked 127 files and went through a database of 477 rootkits. It didn't come out of any. Well, where is get? It says like it says user local bin get. Now, if I do a package uh, query on that, it'll tell you what what put it there. You can tell that it's a it's a Perl part of the Perl script. So I do is do a package uh, which which tells it which package put it there. And then I'll just put user local bin get. And it says, was installed by package p5-libww. So it's, um, it's nothing to worry about. And that's it, really. Um, not too bad. Like I say, you can't rely on this on your for 100% of your security, but it's another, uh, it's another piece that you should use uh, on a daily basis. The other one is uh, check rootkit, I think. Anyway, hopefully this was useful. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. If you want to see more videos like this, then hit that like button. And to make sure you don't miss out, please consider subscribing, as this really helps me help you.